All right then my friends, in this video we're going to be looking at something called Git Tower, which is a really nice visual Git client for Mac and for Windows. So instead of writing all your Git commands in a terminal, we get a nice, clean and intuitive visual interface instead, which we can interact with to run those commands for us. And it's way, way less intimidating than the command line too. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through some of the key features of Git Tower, which can help to speed up your workflow and work with Git more efficiently. So I'm talking about things like making commits, merging branches with a simple drag and drop and how to undo pretty much anything if you make a mistake. Now, before you go any further, I am assuming you already know the basics of Git and they won't be covered in this video. If you need a refresh on that or if you're completely new to Git, then I'll leave a link to a free Git and GitHub course that I've created down below this video. So check that out first. For the rest of us, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to download Tower and you can get a completely free 30 day trial from the Git Tower website. So I'm going to leave this link to this page down below the video so you can get it. Incidentally, if you want access to the pro version of Git Tower for a whole year, which is normally £69, then stick around until the end of the video because I've been given a bunch of pro licenses kindly by Git Tower that I'm giving away to anyone who signs up for a yearly NetNinja Pro subscription. So I'll go into more detail about that and how you can grab your free copy near the end of the video. Anyway, once you've downloaded and installed the free trial version for now, crack it open and we'll start exploring the Tower interface. All right, so once you've got Git Tower installed and fired up, the first thing you want to do is add a repository. Now, if you've already got a local repo, you can just click on add and you can find it on your computer. Tower's going to load it up right here. If you want to create a new repo from scratch, there's an option for that as well. And you can clone from a remote repository too. Super straightforward. So what I'm going to do for now is add a local repository from my computer by clicking this button right here. I'm going to navigate to that repo. And once I do that, Git Tower is going to pull in that repository so we can work with it right here. Now to begin with, I just really quickly want to go over the general interface of Tower so you've got a broad idea of where everything is. So up at the top, you're going to see a few different tabs over here, each focused on a different part of your Git workflow, I guess. By default, you're going to start in the working copy view, and you can think of this as your staging area. Any uncommitted changes, they're going to show up here, and you can choose exactly what you want to stage for your next commit. Once you've committed changes, you can move over to the history view. This is essentially your project timeline. It's going to show each commit, who made it and when. And if you click on a commit, you can see a summary of the changes included in it, which is useful for tracking down specific updates or finding out who worked on what. Next up, we have got the stashes tab, which is where we'd essentially save changes without committing them. So you can think of this as like a quick save. Tower allows you to stash your work, switch branches, and then come back later on right where you left off. Then we've got the pull requests tab, which gives us a clear view of any open pull requests for this project. So next up, we've got the branches tab. And here you can get an overview of all your branches and a visualization of how they relate to each other. So this is good for tracking features, I guess, or spotting where different branches diverge and merge back together. You can also create new branches here or merge branches with a simple drag and drop, which is really cool. And finally, we've got the remotes view down here. And if you're pushing code to GitHub or other remote platforms, this is where you can manage those connections. Tower makes it really easy to see which branches are up to date with the remote ones and which ones need a push or a pull. Plus adding a new remote repository is really simple to do, which we're going to see later on. So that is a quick tour of the main interface in Git Tower. Now let's move on and start diving into some of the different things we can actually do with it. All right, so now we've got our project set up in Git Tower, let's take a look at how we can start working with that project. So in this section, I'm gonna walk you through staging changes, making commits, and creating a new branch to work on a feature, all directly within Tower. First things first though, we're gonna make some updates to our site text content. So I'm gonna head over to VS Code to make those changes to my project, then we'll come back here to stage and commit everything. Okay, so I've made some quick edits to the project and now back in Git Tower, you'll see those changes have been detected and they're currently unstaged. So Tower makes it really easy to see exactly what's changed. And if we click on the files, we get a full diff right here showing us the edits we just made to them. 
To stage those changes, we can just click on the checkbox next to each file, or we can stage all, and that moves them to the staging area, so it's ready to be committed. So now that's staged, I'm going to add up here a commit message. Let's go with something like, I don't know, updated homepage content. And then to commit this, we can just hit commit and we're done. All right, simple, right? So now let's create a new branch inside this repo right here in tower. So imagine I want to make some changes to the styling without affecting our main branch. So to do that, I'll go up to the repository menu up here at the top and select new branch. I'm going to call this branch style hyphen updates, and I'm going to check it out right away, which means we're switching over to this new branch to make our changes. Now, any edits I make, in the code now will be specific to this branch until we decide to merge them back later. Okay, so I've just made just a couple of small style edits and now inside Tower you can see that our changes are showing up again as unstaged in the styles.css file. And just like before, we'll stage this by checking the box next to the file. For the commit message this time, let's go with something like updated styles, and then we can just hit commit. So now we're working on a new branch, we're making commits directly in tower and keeping everything separate from our main branch. And this makes it really easy to test out our ideas or work on new features without risking any changes to our main code base. All right, so now that we've got our new styles committed on the style updates branch, let's switch back to the main branch by double clicking that branch name over here. And we're gonna make a quick update on this branch. So this is gonna show how branches can diverge, which we can then visualize in tower before we merge them together later. So to demo this, I'm gonna jump over to VS Code just to add a little footer to the site, keeping the changes on the main branch separate from the ones on the style updates. All right, so now we've added that footer, we're back in tower where you can see the unstaged change to index.html. I'm going to go ahead and stage that. And then for the commit message, we'll just say added footer. And now we'll commit it. And then if we go over to the history tab, you can see the branches are diverging. So our main branch went in one direction with the footer update, while the style updates branch contains the style changes we committed earlier. So this is one of the nice features I really like about Tower. It clearly shows where the branches split off and how they're related. Now, let's go ahead and merge our style updates branch back into main. And we can do that really easily using a drag and drop of one branch onto another. So make sure that your main branch is selected first of all, and then we're gonna drag the style updates onto main. Now, when we do that, Tower gives us a couple of options. For this project, we're gonna leave both of those options unchecked. And this way, we'll get a regular merge that preserves each commit from style updates. So when we do that, if we go back to the history tab, we can see that the style updates has been merged back into main and all of our changes are reflected in the project history. So this gives us a clear visual record of how and when the branches were merged. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've covered the basic merges, let's take a look at what happens when we encounter a merge conflict. So conflicts are common when multiple people are working on the same project or even when you're working on different branches locally yourself. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna show you how to create and resolve just a simple conflict between two branches right here in the tower interface. So let's start by creating a new branch to do some work in. Now, a shortcut for creating a new branch in tower is control plus B on Windows, on Mac, I think it's command and B. And I'm gonna call this branch feature hyphen branch. And then I'm gonna check it out right away. Okay, so now that's done, let's go back to our code and just make a quick edit. All right, so now that I've made those changes, I'm gonna stage and commit the change on the feature branch. And for the message, we can just say something like new content. Now, we're not gonna merge anything yet. Instead, we're gonna switch back to the main branch by double clicking the branch name. Then we're gonna head back to VS Code and we're gonna edit some of the same code as we did on the feature branch, but with different content. Okay, so now that's done, I'm gonna stage and commit those changes on the main branch. So we'll just call this homepage update. Right, so now we have edits to the same line of code on both branches. 
Now, if we try to merge those, it's going to cause a conflict because we're editing that same line of code and Git doesn't automatically know which version we'd like to keep. So let's try dragging the feature branch onto main to merge it. And as expected, Git Tower detected a conflict. You can see it right here in the merge dialog, which lets us know that index.html has conflicting changes that need to be resolved. Now in Tower, resolving a conflict is pretty straightforward. So if we take a look at that conflict, we can see both versions right here, the version from main and also the one from feature branch. Now we have a few options. We can choose to keep either version or manually edit the code to combine the changes. For this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the message from the feature branch for this particular conflict. Once I've resolved the conflict, Tower prompts me to mark it as resolved. And that's it. We've resolved the conflict and successfully merged the feature branch into main. You can see in the history tab that the merge commit is now part of our project's history with both sets of changes reflected. All right, and now we've merged the feature branch back into main, we could also delete the feature branch if we wanted to by right clicking on the branch name and selecting delete from the options. So handling conflicts, it can seem a little bit tricky at first, but Tower makes it clear where the issues are and it gives us an intuitive way to choose or combine the changes. All right, so now we're comfortable with conflicts, let's move on to the next section where we're gonna look at working with GitHub to back up and share the project. All right then, so in this section, we're gonna connect our project to GitHub so we can back it up online and also potentially allow other developers to collaborate on the project in the future. So to get started, you need to add a new service account. To do that, hit this cloud icon right up here, then select the GitHub option. Once you do this, Tower's gonna to ask you for your account username and then try to authenticate you in a new browser window. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna go through it again. You just follow those steps. And then once we've connected our GitHub account to Tower, we need to make a new remote repository for the project on GitHub. And that's something we need to do manually on GitHub. So let's head over to the GitHub website and create a new repository for this project. Now, first of all, if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you already know how to use GitHub. So I've not gone through the process of creating a new repo. As you can see here, I've already got one. It's brand new and it's called 8-Bit Collective. It's completely empty. I've not created a readme file or anything else so we can avoid any conflicts or unnecessary steps, basically. So we just need to grab the repository URL, which we'll need back in Tower to connect to it. Okay, so now with our project open in Tower, we can add a remote by clicking the plus icon down here in the bottom left corner and choosing add remote repository. Then we can just paste in the GitHub URL that we copied and we're gonna name this remote origin. After that, we can save it. So then the GitHub repo is now set up as the remote origin, which means we can just push our code to GitHub. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna make sure that the main branch is selected. Then we just click on this up arrow icon to push it make sure everything looks correct on this next pop-up and then confirm. And then this uploads the main branch to GitHub. You can also push other branches to the remote by right-clicking them over here and selecting push. And there we go, the code is now on GitHub. So with this connection in place, we can use Tower to push future changes and keep everything backed up online. So in the next section, we're gonna go through how to collaborate on GitHub by working with branches and pull requests. Okay then gang, so in this section, we're gonna simulate a pull request workflow where we could imagine another developer making a pull request on GitHub to merge a new feature branch into main. Once that's done, we'll wanna keep our local main branch in sync with the remote and so we'll pull those changes directly within Tower. Now, since there's only me working on this project, I'm gonna to have to pretend that I'm some other developer making a new feature, then a pull request, but that's okay because it means we get to practice with branches and pushes a little bit more. So what we'll do is create a new branch to work on a new feature, then we'll push it to GitHub. Then we'll create a pull request before reviewing and merging it into main. So that's the kind of workflow you would typically use when you're collaborating on a project. Let's start by creating that new branch for this feature. I'm gonna press Control B to do that. And I'm gonna name this branch New Footer. And I'm gonna check it out right away so that any changes I make will stay separate from main until we're ready to merge. All right, so now I'm gonna make a small change to the footer in the code as if another developer were adding a feature. Once that's done, I'll stage and commit the changes here on Tower. All right, so now we've made that change, we are gonna stage it and we'll also commit it. And for the message, we can just say something like added a new footer. 
All right, so next we want to push this feature branch to GitHub. So let's use the push icon up here to do that. And uh, yeah, this is going to upload the selected branch then to GitHub. Okay, so now within this repo in GitHub, we can see that the new push is right here. So we'll create a pull request to review and merge this into the main branch. So GitHub has a prompt for this right here. We're going to click that. It says compare and pull request. Make sure it's got some kind of title. Then we're just going to submit the request. Now at this point, the pull request is open and ready for review. So we could take a look at that, make sure everything looks in order first, and then we could just go ahead and confirm the merge. And now main has that new footer update. All right, so now back in tower, our local main branch is behind the remote one because of that pull request and merge on GitHub. So now we can pull those changes to main by first of all, selecting the main branch right here. Then we can click on this black down arrow to pull the remote branch into the current head branch main in our case. So let's do that. And hopefully you're going to see that extra merge commit inside the history when you do. So that's it, we have successfully simulated a pull request workflow using GitHub to review and merge a feature branch and then using Tower to pull those changes down into the local repo. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to undo any of your actions in Tower when something goes wrong. Okay, so in this section, we're gonna look at how to undo actions in Git Tower. And Tower gives us multiple ways to quickly fix mistakes, whether it's a recent commit, a merge, or even just staged changes. And it's really easy to do. So I'm gonna start with a basic example. Imagine I just made a commit, which I have done, but then I realize I need to make some changes to that commit. If it's the most recent commit, then I can just easily undo it by either going to repository up here and then selecting undo, or even easier, just use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control plus Z on Windows or Command and Z on a Mac. So when we do that once, then Tower is just going to undo the commit, putting the changes back into the staging area so I can adjust them if I wanted to and I could commit again. You can also keep on undoing commits you've made by using that shortcut again if you need to. OK, so what if I need to undo a merge? If I've just completed a merge, but decide then I want to undo it. Well, I can again just use Control plus Z immediately after the merge, and that undoes it for me. Very simple, right? So pretty much anything you do in Tower, you can undo by using that shortcut or by going to repository in the menu, then choosing undo. So then my friends, hopefully this tutorial showed you how easy it is to work with Git and GitHub using Git Tower. And personally, I think it's much easier to use than it is to use the command line. It's much more visual, intuitive. It comes with some really nice features to improve your productivity and your workflow. I would definitely recommend trying it out with your own projects. Anyway, I mentioned near the start of this video that I had a bunch of pro license coupons for Git Tower that were kindly given to me. And those coupons get you a whole year of the pro version of this product for free instead of the normal price of £69. And I'm offering those coupons to anyone who signs up for a yearly membership of NetNinja Pro, which is just $79. And a part of that membership, don't forget, you also get access to the entire NetNinja course library, including a lot of courses and masterclasses not found anywhere else. So I'll leave a link to the pro membership page right here down below the video so you can sign up. Once you've signed up, you can send an email to offers at netninja.dev and you can ask for your free Tower Pro coupon. Likewise, if you're an active yearly pro member already, you can email the same address for your free coupon too. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoy using Git Tower as well. I'm going to see you all in the next one.